Hello, Sebastian Lacido here, and welcome to Headline and Prophecy. Uh, today we're going to naturally look at what's going on in the headlines and how it pertains to prophecy. Before we move on, uh, understand that this is our censored blog. We've been, we get censored for this blog. We've, uh, we've actually been uh, temporarily suspended from YouTube, so I have to be very careful on how I lay out what's going on. You can receive our uncensored blog by becoming a member of our ministry, go to our website, watchersoftruth.com. That's watchersoftruth.com. Sign up to be a free member. You give us your name and email address so we know you're a real person. And then every Friday, our uncensored blog uh, is emailed to you. Uh, also, you will receive notes for our Bible studies. You'll have access to our free uh, curriculums with workbooks and uh, DVDs. Uh, or you could do it online, and uh, there's we actually have a 12-part series on end times eschatology, which uh, uh, which is online. It's called "Don't Get This Wrong," and then also we have we teach eschatology or end times every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So again, WatchersOfTruth.com, uh, sign up to be a free member. We don't sell your information. We don't share it with other ministries. We do email you a couple of times during the week uh, with information. Uh, but uh, but hopefully you'll find it useful. Anyway, so as I go through today, understand that I'm doing it with, uh, you know, trying to uh, not offend. Last week we were suspended, or not suspended, we were censored for me answering a question about who the 200 million man army could be in Revelation chapter 9. Whether it was spiritual or physical uh, army of 200 million, who I thought that would be. I answered the question and they censored and took down the whole uh, uh, text stream. So, you know, we're, we're targeted and uh, it seems that we can't have our own opinion any longer. Anyway, uh, Matthew chapter 24 uh, should be well known to you if you're study and times. Jesus has asked, what will be the sign of your coming in the end of the age? He's asked three questions, but those are the two that pertain. What will be the signs of your coming? What will tell us that we're getting closer? And what will the end of the age be like? So in verse 4, Jesus said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. In other words, the first words out of his mouth is, do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. Uh, it says, for many will come in my name. So many will come in the name of Jesus as Christians and say, I am Christ or the anointed one and will deceive many. So many will be deceived. Uh, he's warning, don't be deceived. He said, and here's what he said. He said, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So he's telling us in the news cycle, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. So actual wars are going to occur. Rumors of wars are going to occur. He said, don't be troubled by them. They must come to pass. In other words, I have ordained and will allow them to come to pass. Verse 7. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famine, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. In other words, the, the new cycle will be filled with nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There'll be famine, that's a lack of food and water. Pestilence, that's COVID, other uh, you know, uh, viruses. Earthquakes, is upheaval in nature. So Jesus is telling you these are the beginning of birth pangs, which means that these are going to come more frequently and be more severe as we get closer to... Um, his return. Verse 9 says, then they will deliver you up. Well, who's you? It's his disciples. They'll deliver you up, the disciplined believers in Jesus Christ, to tribulation. They'll kill you. You'll be hated of all nations for my namesake. So in other words, we will be uh, a minority, we'll be targeted, our lifestyle. We're not talking about labeled Christians here. We're talking about those that would actually live a life uh, that's biblical in nature and not without compromise and 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 speaking truth and living truth and not wanting uh, sin to come into our homes and to our families. So, you know, the world will see us as not being tolerant of others and not, you know, compromising for others uh, and we'll be looked at as an enemy. And, you know, that we're starting to see that that's already occurring around the world, but we're starting to see it in other nations. Let's talk about Russia. Uh, which, you know, nothing like this has happened since World War II, where you have a 200,000, uh, you know, uh, suited military 
coming against another nation to take it. We've seen, you know, we did see uh, Iraq and Kuwait and some other minor skirmishes, but never have we seen this on the European continent since World War II. You know, so, um, you know, uh, Vladimir Putin is, is completely uh, committed to this. Um, he's, he's moved troops into Ukraine. Um, he did this in 2014. He had an incursion into Ukraine. He's gone into Chechnya, Georgia, and he took over the Crimea. So, I mean, he's had five, six, seven assassinations of political enemies. He's an ex-KGB uh, officer. Uh, you know, so he, I don't think he's crazy. I mean, that's in my estimation. I think he may have miscalculated some things. I don't think he calculated uh, Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, nor the power of social media, uh, being able to, and you don't have to have a wartime correspondent. You have people with cell phones that are able to broadcast out the atrocities and what's going on. And I don't believe he understood the world's response at this point in time um, with sanctions. I don't think it's gonna sway him either way. But here's, here's the thing. Uh, you know, because the world has become a community, uh, there's a lot of nations in the world that are dependent upon the goods and services that Russia produces, particularly uh, oil and gas. And so e even early on in this, we've seen weakness in NATO where Germany and Italy both were hesitant because they get 70% of their energy from Russia, you know, something like that. And so they're fully committed now in, in, I mean, Biden in the world and NATO has come against them uh, and the world's watching this and they're, you know, they're, but there's certain nations that are still helping them. There's certain nations that, that have bought goods and services. I don't want to go into who here uh, because clearly they're trying to protect some of these groups. But, uh, you know, uh, gas, uh, oil hit 130 today. It settled at 120 in, in the pre-markets. You know, that means that because it hit that today, we're looking at, you know, another, you know, maybe uh, 50 cent to 75 percent increase, not percent, but increase in gas and oil. If it gets to 150 or, or 175 or 200, we're going to be in the stratosphere on gas and oil, which leads to what? At least unemployment, uh, high food prices, because gas and oil touch everything. You know, they touch your garbage pickup, uh, your, you know, bread at the, at the market. It touches everything. And so we'll see uh, high inflation, we'll see supply issues. Uh, Russia has already made threats uh, to those that sell armaments or give armaments to arms to the Ukrainian military. Uh, they've made threats of cyber attacks to water, energy, uh, and other critical infrastructure such as banking. So this is, this is escalating, we don't see the sanctions biting in, I'm more concerned with uh, the countries that are helping them, uh, helping them meaning financially, politically, and, uh, you know, and militarily, actually from selling them goods and services. Uh, we know that Russia, China, and Iran, this is in the news, they shouldn't censor this, ran joint military operations. Why Iran would be a part of it is interesting in and of itself. There's a group, and, and, and it's called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Again, I, you know, I, I want to dance around the censors here, but here are the members. Here's what they do. They're, if you go to Wikipedia, Google Shanghai Cooperation Organization. If you Google it, Wikipedia will tell you it's a political, uh, economic, and security alliance. It's mutual in nature. They are the largest uh, organization of, of nations, even larger than NATO. Uh, they, 40% uh, of the population lives in these countries, 25% of the GDP. So here's the member states, China, India, Russia, Pakistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, and Tajikistan. The four observing members are Iran, Belarus, Afghanistan, and Mongolia. And six dialogue members are Armenia, Azerbaijan, Nepal, Turkey, 
Sri Lanka and Cambodia. So when you look at these nations, there's, there's uh, 18 of them. NATO has more nations, but these have uh, more population. Uh, these nations are the nations of Ezekiel 38. I mean, all of these nations, the only one missing here is Syria and some of Northern Africa, Ethiopia and Sudan. The, they are part of the Ezekiel prophecy in, in Ezekiel chapter 38. This organization is headquartered in Beijing. Um, and, you know, so they agreed to provide military, PR, finance, and uh, uh, other support. Um, they, China, as you know, is, is, has their own digital currency that just launched. They also are setting up their own banking system to get away from SWIFT. So, uh, you know, they want to be the world reserve currency. They want to have the largest military. This isn't a secret. But at the same time, I think we have to watch as, you know, Biden and uh, President Biden and NATO navigate this because there's a weakness in them for a direct confrontation with Russia, which is understandable. You have two nuclear forces coming against each other. So they're dancing through this engagement, hoping there's no direct engagement or even indirect engagement with NATO. Uh, that's why there's a lot of resistance in the no-fly zone and some of the other things that are going on. But at the same time, Russia knows this and is continuing to make threats. They rattled their nuclear sword by putting their nuclear forces on alert. But they also said, if you sell aircraft to Ukraine or give them military support, we, we view that as an act of war. We can't stand here and watch forever as he destroys this free democracy, this, this nation of people that were just wanted to enjoy life. I'm really proud of them, we all are. But at some point, this reaches a flashpoint. If someone doesn't bring uh, this to a table, uh, you know, I mean, what are the threats to us? Well, first of all, uh, high gas and energy prices are going to affect everything we do, everything we touch. It's going to affect food prices, should bring a recession, supply issues, unemployment. Businesses won't be able to operate with margins. There's a threat of cyber attack, energy, water, financial. They, did, they shut down the Colonial Pipeline. Uh, it wasn't the Russian government, but, but operators out of Russia. Also, it could be, lead to direct war. It could actually lead to war with Russia. You know, so Biden and company has a difficult task of, of, um, of going through this. You know, my opinion is that, you know, I would have taken a different direction. Again, my uncensored blog is on Friday. Um, it comes out called What I Really Think. Please go there and sign up. I mean, eventually, uh, you know, they're going to, you know, I, this may not even survive. I have no idea what, where their boundaries are anymore. So go to our website, watchersoftruth.com, watchersoftruth.com. Sign up to be a free member, your name and your email address. You'll have access to our notes, our curriculum, uh, all of our workbooks, and uh, our uncensored blog. All of it's free. I mean, we're looking for partners. I need partners. We need those of you that can support us, 10 bucks, 20, 30, 50 a month to help us continue to do this um, and to continue to teach. We teach five sessions a week. We have two blogs and three sessions where we teach. We're teaching the book of Revelations verse, verse by verse every Thursday morning. Uh, it's on our uh, website and social media. So anyway, you know, uh, that's headline and prophecy this week. We have to watch where this goes. I mean, every day, um, uh, you know, Russia's taken over all, all, most of the nuclear plants, which means they're going to be able to control the uh, energy to Ukraine, shut it off. They mined it, so, um, th you know, that would uh, be very difficult to take it back. If they leave, they could blow it up. I mean, anything's possible with this uh, man. He's very evil, and he doesn't care about us or anyone else. Uh, he, his agenda is to rebuild the, you know, the USSR, the Soviet bloc, which means, you know, Ukraine was a part of it, Lithuania was a part of it, uh, Romania, Poland, uh, and uh, uh, I believe Finland. I don't know if Finland was or not. Uh, but anyway, 
That's his agenda. We're living in a, in a different world today. Stay tuned. I'll see you next uh, Monday for another Headline of Prophecy. But more importantly, I'd like to see you on Friday with uh, what I really think. And again, that's watchersoftruth.com, watchersoftruth.com. Sign up to become a free member. God bless you, and may God's face shine upon you. And I'll see you next Monday. Thank you.